Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Advantage One RV today, and I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. I've seen lacrosses for years now. I've never seen one this nice. It's 7,835 pounds. Truly surprised me. Like, you do this for a while, you think you got it figured out, you know what you're gonna walk into, and I love it when a product absolutely just knocks me right back on my keister. I was truly impressed by this. It, it has, I, and I feel it qualifies as what I like to call a flat deck fifth wheel. It's got that big expansive living space. It is only two slides though, which keeps the weight down to 7,835 pounds, and it has a wide stance stability axle system. So I think this is a really good extended stay coach. It's got washer dryer prep. You could, I could see some people theoretically full time in something like this. It's a really interesting mix of things. It's really sharp, it's really well executed, it has all kinds of eye appeal. I am impressed. And I know it sounds like a real salesman-y thing to say, oh, forget it's a travel trailer, it's like a fifth wheel. Hang with me a little bit. I think you're going to see why I say that. Yeah, it's definitely a travel trailer. There's little symptoms of it here and there other than ob the obvious you know, physical layout of it. This very much has a sharp fifth wheel feel about it though there's some really good qualities going on and i, I tell you it's like i said i'm impressed i mm, i don't remember lacrosse as being this good lacrosse is a brand that historically i thought was okay but that's that's about the best i would say about it they, they, they were okay this is this is really nice like i i totally get the appeal you got the Jumbotron Entertainment Center over here. And this is behind the outside camp kitchen, which would be located outside. We'll get to that, too. But that TV can pivot around for some easy viewing. Uh, it's uh, mounted above the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster there. But if you want to, you can pivot the TV so that it kind of splits the difference between that rear hide-a-bed sleeper sofa. And I like those nice, good size side stands. And all of the windows open for airflow in this. Like, it's got great light. Great visibility, great window coverage. You can see it's not beat up. The seating's not torn up. It's not shredded wheat in here. The, uh, th that theater seat with that large console, that's a big theater seat, actually. Console has a little bit of hidden storage into it. It's a little bit of a wall hugger so that you don't have to worry about peeling it away from the wall. It's also got a six foot nine ceiling in here, which opens things up pretty nicely. That's become a real common um, interior height from a lot of RV brands. And I'm glad to see that. Um, it's it's It gives you that extra space you're really going to want here. Now, zooming over into the kitchen, one of the things I want to make real clear on this is that is not uh, a 12-volt refrigerator. That is an LG uh, 110 fridge. It does have an ice maker in it, though. And that's another one of those things that makes me kind of feel like this is definitely going to be something that you want to use at a destination. Um, but remember, I keep saying it's got like fifth wheel feels in it. So you got a residential refrigerator, you have an ice maker, you have that big residential size convection uh, uh, microwave, you have that three burner sealed stove top like something straight out of a Montana. You saw nothing but wide open storage below that because one of the interesting qualities on this RV that actually I kind of like, and I think there's more market for this than a lot of people are willing to admit. There's no traditional oven in here. There's no propane oven. I know that's not for everybody. Um, I know that our our southern cousins, you like to have your ovens. You got, I always say cookies and biscuits. And I get that. Don't get me wrong. I like cookies and biscuits for sure. A lot of us, though, could get by without that, especially considering that's an extra large convection oven above that. This is a, uh, this is forward thinking right here. There's not enough of this in the industry today. And when you close it all up, it's nice and clean, but man, there was a lot of good storage in here. Everything's very sharp and angular in appearance. Not like physically sharp, you're gonna jab yourself on it. Thankfully though, those solid surface corners are rounded just a little bit. And the dining and the viewing over here on the door side, those giant atrium style windows is what Rockwood used to call them. I don't care if you're sitting at the theater seat, if you're at the dining, you know, this is kind of your view over here. Actually, I'll take a seat. This is the left-hand theater seat. This is exactly what you see right here. So you can be involved with the campsite chef or the drink meister because everybody knows the party ends in the kitchen because that's where the food and drinks are. You have amazing views of what's going on on your campsite. You probably have a good line of sight on your own little fire pit even. If there is just two of you, 
consider taking two of those chairs out of here and just, I don't know, store them anywhere else, frankly. You'll leave them at home and just have a nice little two-person dining arrangement there. You're directly across, again, from that entertainment center. And, uh, I mean, just, it's, here's another thing. The TV's not mounted, like, all the way up to the ceiling. It is at a true no-neck wrecker angle right here. And it doesn't matter, again, if you're sitting there or if you're over here on the sofa, just kind of chilling and lounging. You don't even really need to pivot the TV, although you could. And it's, it's a very comfortable experience in here. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Does this not have fifth wheel feels going on in it, guys? Now we've gone from one seat to the other, and uh, I'll give you a dollar if you can guess which seat I'm sitting on currently. <laughs> We're hanging out in the bathroom right now. And I wanna point out just some of the other nice details here. I like that level exchange. I know some people don't. I find them very aesthetically pleasing. It opens up a couple nice little pockets right here. But it gives you, okay, here's where my blow dryer, shaver kind of stuff is going to go. Wash your hands, toothbrush kind of stuff over there. I like the extra shelf above. Like, there's some handy space. And then once again, we've got some of those fifth wheel kind of feelings here. Like, that's a big shower. That is a big shower for a travel trailer? Are you kidding me? I've only seen a couple things like a Jayco Eagle that will do the big oversized, almost fifth wheel style showers like this. And again, with this having that six foot nine ceiling, if you're 6'3 or shorter, you'll definitely be able to stand in there no problem. Uh, there's plumbing code reasons that always force manufacturers to make you like step up into the uh, toilet or shower space. Porcelain foot flush stool right there. Nice uh, leg room in front of that. And that is fluffy friendly, man. If you're a little thicker in the hips or the shoulders or whatever, you're a bigger person, a bigger lady, you've got more than enough room in there. Sliding privacy door here to the bedroom. And this is definitely, it's not a bedroom slide model. That's one of the other things here. It's, you know, if you're going to spend some extended time in it, but maybe not necessarily living in it, that's kind of the idea behind the difference here. But again, if you're a little bit bigger person, notice how there's not hanging side stands, giving you claustrophobia on both sides. And if you're also noticing, that is one of those um, interestingly sized like RV kind of king beds right there. So you have, there is still enough room, I think, to get around the bed, but now we just have a nice wide open space where we get to relax at night. Also, you may have noticed this does have a second uh, air conditioner installed here. That is a dump AC, meaning it's just going to flood this room with all that cold air. So if you like sleeping in an ice box, this is the RV for you. Now, if we flip around here in the bedroom, you see why I kind of call this a flat deck fifth wheel. Instead of a bed slide with a front closet, you have a closet kind of built into the bedroom bathroom exchange wall, but you might have noticed combo washer dryer hookups in there. And then down below, a couple dresser drawers. This is actually very similar to the upper deck of uh, a lot of the Jayco Eagle HTs that are produced today. And I figured as long as we're spinning around, I'd go ahead and close the slides and show us the RV and road mode. Obviously, the bathroom's on the right. Green's Clearwater has a song about that. We got the entry door on the left, and we're done. <laughs> that is just about the end of our road mode tour you can get to a little bit of pantry space here but th this is definitely a model made for having the slides deployed and being used at a destination but i didn't want to just gloss over that i wanted to take the extra effort to show you everything that i could man that is uh it's just got a good look to it you know it just the right curves, the right lines, the windows all in it, just aesthetically, it really attracts me. You see the protective slide awnings over both uh, of those big slides. And again, out here, we have this camp kitchen space, which remember, now we have two refrigerators. So this is uh, saving us from having to trek in and out of the RV all day, trekking dirt around. You can keep your uh, bottled water and your barley pop out here in dad's medicine cabinet. That's a little cooktop, and if you're not using that, it's just a stainless steel prep space or a place that you could cut some limes for your drinks or whatever. It's a uh, it's a sharp arrangement here. Oh, something I just noticed. That's interesting. The ladder folds. Hmm. Maybe if you want to put a bike rack or something on the back, you could do that. That's interesting. All right. Well, moving on up, we have our wide stance stability axle system here. You can see right on the screw, easy toe. What that's going to do, because it is still a pretty long rig, is uh, it's going to like make it 
cheat the wheelbase. It will tow like it's a little bit shorter. It adds some extra stability. It takes a lot of the bouncing and jouncing out of transit. It is not a replacement for a proper weight distributing anti-sway hitch. It's a supplement to that, where if you've got a shorter wheelbase vehicle, a shorter length vehicle, it's gonna help you because a longer trailer like this could push you around the road. If you're not sure what your vehicle can do, call our team, we'll make sure you're getting matched up safely. And look at all this stuff. The, the folks are moving. That's, by the way, that's why this is here. I don't know if I mentioned that previously. They're moving, so they're just done camping in this area, basically. Uh, they're just kind of saying, you know what, we're going to change up our lifestyle. All of their big RV accessories, you've got wheel shocks and X shocks and sewer centipedes and all kinds of leveling blocks and all sorts of things all in there. Magnet holdbacks on those uh, uh, compression-type slam latches. Four-corner power jacks all the way around. Power tongue jack, power partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> And look at this, no sun, no weather exposure, just gorgeous, well-kept. I gotta believe this was stored inside. Look at the gloss on that sidewall. Watch the light dance down that glass right there. Oh, that is just beautiful looking at those clouds reflect around. Three-quarter nose cap on that too, means that you also get to keep that diamond plate and given full credit where it's due. Uh, Lacrosse was really, Primetime was really one of the brands that popularized that and so many other brands have since uh, adopted that policy. And I like it because we get the look of the nose cap with the protection of the diamond plate. It's a really good one-two punch, I think. And very similar again to a fifth wheel. Up in the front compartment, we have a full privatized docking center. If we get down here, um, I don't know what kind of claims Primetime makes. I don't know this to be what people call a Four Seasons RV. It's going to have a very respectable extended season package, however. And just a brief little look here before we run up that ladder. She's back up camera ready as well. Man, I can't, I cannot find a single thing from ground level that I feel I need to report. And, and, and any defects or dings or glitches, this is, man, this has been kept. Yep, yep, this was stored inside. This is what a roof looks like when it's been stored inside. All the original seals, still super viable, super looking good. Folks, this is, uh, in, in car terms, you would call it turnkey ready. All you got to do with this one is pack up your mac and cheese and your applesauce and hit the road. And in case you're curious about this little thing you might have seen over here, they're also selling their boat. So they're selling their RV and their boat. We'll have you some separate pictures on that, though. What do you think? Am I crazy? Is that sharp or what? That is a nice coach right there. I see the attraction. I really never did before, but I feel like that... These guys are putting it together. They're putting together a heck of a package. You like what you see? You want to make it yours? Give us a call down here at Advantage One RV. And if you haven't done so, please take a moment to either like, subscribe, do both, leave me a comment. Let me know what you like about it. Any questions you might have, and I'll do my best to fill in the blanks. I leave you a link in the video description to see if it's available and what these sellers are, their, their asking price is, because I don't have that information available to me at the time that I'm recording, sorry. Short of that, give us a call. Love to hear from you. Take care, stay safe. Have fun and have an A1 day, everyone.